into the final quarter of the year and it's easy for investors still to be blindsided by geopolitical uncertainty and worries about low inflation. But how confident is the market right now? Well, with me to discuss this is Luca Paolini of Pictet Asset Management. Luca, welcome. Uh, are you a, have you stopped worrying about North Korea and low inflation and things like that? Are you very much confident about the market? Well, well what we have learned in the last few years that in, we shouldn't probably worry too much about political geopolitical risk. We should focus on growth, we should focus on inflation and central banks. What we know is that global growth is basically close to 4%, mm. it's one of the best uh, rates we have seen since since the uh, uh, since 2009, uh, consumer confidence close to an all-time high, and inflation is low, which obviously very supportive for risk assets. So in that sense, I think the outlook for the next three to six months is very positive for for equity investors. And our first chart shows just how confident uh, the market is, and and how asset prices are responding to that. Yeah, what we well, again what we can see from the chart is that there is still a strong correlation between global growth, global confidence, and markets. It's not just central banks. If growth is very strong, earnings are going up, and then obviously very good for uh, for equity investors. And your second chart is is the old-fashioned misery index, which uh, we used to worry about, but just look how low it is these days. Yeah, the misery index was very popular in the 70s in the period of stagflation. Just explain what it is. It's just the sum of the unemployment rate and inflation. The idea is that if you have low unemployment and low inflation, it is very good for, for market. And actually, what you can see here, this negative correlation. And this also would suggest that even if everybody's worried about valuation in the US, and valuation is high, the, the misery index would suggest there is still a little bit of upside in terms of valuation, maybe around 15 or 20 percent until the end of the cycle. So there is still a little bit of upside, definitely in the US, even on valuation. Okay. Okay, and what's helping that, your third chart shows, is, is zero bound policy, uh, which you know, coupled with low, in, low unemployment uh, also makes it a good case for investing. Well, what you can see in the chart that historically, again, we have higher rates when inflation stands to fall. There is a negative correlation. Now we are seeing uh, the unemployment rate in the uh, developed markets at an all time low but you still have exceptionally low interest rates. This could be seen as a positive, and it is for the next three to six months, because we don't expect a big change in monetary policy, but yeah. it's also a risk in the medium term, because it's difficult to expect central banks to remain dovish forever yes. when you have very solid growth, and growth above potential. Yes, I was going to ask, I mean, just finally, look, I mean, the uh, you know, investors have been very short term for a, an awful long time. Um, is it time to start thinking more medium term about your know, investment opportunities? Well, yes and no. It's always, I think, one of the problems that we have in, in this industry to be focused too much in the short term. We are missing the big picture. And the big picture still the business cycle. As long as the business cycle is doing well, equities will do well. The question mark is, though, is how long this business cycle will continue. We start to see the first indication we are approaching the end of the cycle. In our view, we still have one, two years. So maybe it's a bit too late to be too uh, long term, but I think being sh too short term, I think is not, is never, I think, the solution. Luca Paolini, thank you very much.